County Football on WIFO. Brought to you by your Jessup Piggly Wiggly, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce, and Green Motor Company. Hey, welcome back. Wayne County trails 20 to 0. Before we get to the stats and the highlights, we got a special guest, Murray Poole. Big game tomorrow in Athens, Georgia, Georgia and Tennessee. Murray, dog fans, excited about the Kirby Smart era, but concerned about the offensive line and some receivers uh, still dropping passes. A uh, big test tomorrow, but they beat Tennessee somehow, some way. They're right back in the thick of things in the SEC East. Yeah, Bob, they just, uh, you know, hadn't put anything together, I don't believe, really, since the uh, North Carolina game. You know, uh, the offensive line. 289 rushing that, you know, Nick, of course, had 222, but since then, it's been a struggle. Uh, they're trying to run power football, but it just haven't been, uh, you know, the lineman up creating any space for Chubb and the rest of the back, Sonny Michelle, but, uh, you know, it's, it's everybody's fault. I went to the game last week in Oxford, and, uh, you know, the defense didn't play well, just gave up too many big plays, and like Kirby said, we simply couldn't answer anything successful that the Rebels did, and they did a lot, you know, and I can't remember a Georgia team, uh, getting buried almost by the second quarter, 31 nothing, Bob, and 45 to nothing. It could have been a lot worse. But, uh, you know, we just hope that's a perfect storm against Georgia last week. And, and I think you'll see a more spirited football team tomorrow. I think they'll take the fight to Tennessee. I don't know if they've been able to correct that much in one week to beat the Vols, but maybe they're catching Tennessee a little uh, a little notch off uh, how high they were last week and celebrating that big win, comeback win over the Gators. You've been up there a long time. You're in those press conferences. I'm just curious. Has anybody asked about the kicking woes? Has anybody addressed that issue? Again, no scholarship kicker, four guys that are just out there. And right now, this part of the season, the kicking game has been atrocious. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's talked about every day. You know, they uh, – you know, they started out with, with Ham, you know, and he just uh, just had trouble. Apparently, you know, the guy won the job in practice, but he just, uh, in the game, pulled a crowd and the lights on. He just, uh, you saw Shaqton bad against Missouri, and then Blankenship's back in there. And he hit that ball good last week. It was just to the right of the crossbar. I think you're going to see Blankenship kick, kick it at the same time. Uh, there's uh, There I had a story I saw today of a Mill Creek kicker. It's really making 56 yarders, and he's hit like 13 out of 17 field goals from 40 yards out, and uh, the speculation, just like what you said, uh, will Kirby give a full scholarship? Because a kid commented in, the, I believe it was in the AJC, that he wouldn't uh, take anything less than a full ride. So I think really Kirby better, you know, a lot one of them scholarships, because like you say, uh, it, uh, you know, it's going to cost them a game. Cause every game is not going to be losing by 45 points, and there's going to be some close ones, maybe even tomorrow. And uh, they've got to kick the ball through the uprights when they're inside the 40. They can't miss chip shots, you know. I'm curious, you know, like I said, you've been there a long time. You've been through Dooley, Don, and Goff, you know, Mark Rick for many years. How is it with Kirby Smart? I uh, read some articles that, you know, he's, he's got that Nick Saban attitude, like, you know, I really don't want to deal with the media very much. doesn't give the media much. Not a lot of access. So how's that going with uh, the reporters up there in Athens and the Atlanta media? Well, the positive thing is he, uh, and I, I, fortunately, I'm not there every day. been down here in the Golden Isles, you know. But uh, for every day's practice, but uh, you know, I will say that he answers all questions so fully, and he doesn't uh, him around the bush. Uh, Coach Ricky sometimes would kind of make it a fun thing and draw things out. But Kirby's right to the point; he'll answer every question. It may not be the way you like it, but uh, you know, certainly uh, I think the, the negative thing is he just he just doesn't want anybody. He screens who can talk to the press, really, even more than Coach Rick did. Coach Rick would usually bring five or six players at daily practice. You'd see him come up the elevator and talk to us, all the media. Kirby limits to three guys, and it's a lot of the same upperclassmen over and over. He doesn't let the freshmen talk, and there was a kind of a big rhubarb about that when he let, let Jacob Eason talk after the 300-yard passing game. And, uh, you know, I think some of these kids are mature enough to handle it, but uh, that's not a university rule, but Kirby said it, it's a team rule. It, I guess, started with him. So uh, he's kind of like Saban, yeah, in that department all, all the way up and down the line. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the media would certainly like more access, Bob, but uh, they're just not going to get it from Kirby, uh, at least unless he changes his spots as it would go along. One final question. Holyfield got on the field last week, looked impressive the few times he carried it. How good can he be? You know, I went down the field with five minutes left. Every uh, school doesn't let you go down now on the field, the media, five minutes left. But uh, I was in there kind of about even with him when he was carrying the ball. And you can see that quickness and acceleration. And a little like to me, Bob, he just had a determination to run that ball hard. He wanted to play, and he was excited. And, and I think he's uh, got a quick step, and I think he's really going to help him starting tomorrow, especially, you know, we're hearing Nick's out. Apparently, I hadn't heard anything official on that, but 
it seemed to be his dad talking about it. I don't think he can play for two games. Maybe next week he can come back. But Michelle will start, and then you're going to see a lot of Holyfield. And, uh, and of course, uh, the Harrion kid, who's really, I thought, got a lot of quickness too. And uh, So, you know, they've got to run the ball, whoever's in there, because if they don't, then, uh, you know, like Tennessee, like Ole Miss, really going to bring the house on Jacob Eason, and that's, that's a lot of pressure on a freshman quarterback. If we can't run the ball successfully, we've got to do it. Got to get back to Georgia football, and I hope uh, Kirby can do that as we're going down the line. Okay, Mark, always good to see you. Appreciate the good to see you. Like I say, good work in that magazine. A lot of pictures in there. Who takes all the pictures for you? <laughs> I think we've got some people up there. I don't have anything to do with that. I just write. So, uh, yeah, we are. We've gone to a magazine format the first time this year. I think it really looks good and getting around the state a little more. So, yeah, it's kind of labor of love, Bob. And well, yeah, yeah. thank you, and uh, good luck to the Jackets yeah. the rest of the season. Always good to see you. Appreciate it very much. Again, that's Murray Poole again. Covers the teams down here in the Golden Isles, but again, has been up in Athens many, many years covering the Georgia Bulldogs and will be up there Saturday when they take on the Tennessee Volunteers.